we just got a call from the vet and uh, Samson passed away last night. So I'm gonna go get him. Welcome to the Little Pallet Farmhouse. We homestead on 20 acres of woodland in Northeast Missouri. A small wooded property as we see it is full of untapped potential. Even though it's often sold off as low value land, we disagree. And so we're here to share our dream with you as we tackle DIY projects around the farm and home to fill our pantry from the land. This is our journey towards self-sufficiency on a woodland homestead. Um, hey guys, so um, we had a Pyrenees, uh, a, a great Pyrenees. His name was Samson. Uh, yeah, unfortunately he was killed uh, a little, uh, a few days ago. Uh, which is pretty tough, and so it's worse that he was a hit and run incident, and never saw the car, heard it, heard it all, and uh, he or she never had the decency to stop and say, "Hey, sorry about that." Here's our road. Somebody came up the road flying and hit our dog. This is where I found Samson. And we live on a county road, gravel road. Normally you don't drive very fast. Normally it's about 30 miles an hour, 35. This, tr this car was driving at, you know, I think 50, 60 miles an hour, flying for, for a gravel road. Anyway, um, and Samson, I think, was at the edge of the road, which is even more bizarre. So Samson was laying here to there. That's the blood. That's the length of his body. You would then pull the car over right there. You get out and see about the animal. And then you go knock on the door. So although we never figured we'd be making a video in these circumstances, there is a lot to the breed, the Great Pyrenees. And so um, there's, a, there's, a, there's some footage of, of him and uh, doing life, him doing life with us. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, he was a great dog. We're also gonna talk a little bit about just him and, and the breed in general, or say, Things that may, you might be curious about as to, well, is a Pyrenees a good fit for me in my homestead? Well, and we'll talk about that and, and just basically all our experiences of Samson. Where are we going today, guys? To get a dog? Yeah, we're going to get a puppy. Do you, remember what, do you remember what type of puppy it is? Great, uh, great Pyrenees. Mm -hmm. Lucky! What do you think about it, Mr. Wilson? Looking forward to it. You could go and purchase a dog that might be a couple hundred bucks and a Pyrenees and might be mixed with something else. Um, it's yeah. it's possible you'll get a great dog. Um, and there are, no, there are no guarantees, but at least for our experience, we went with a breeder. It was expensive for a dog, I think. And so, but the outcome was uh, a purebred Pyrenees who was an even-mannered, uh, like, Easy going, he did his job, great temperament, and... Um, well, I think you get what you pay for, and I think it's good to look for a reputable breeder. We would definitely recommend the breeder that we got Samson from, because he came from purebred bloodlines, he had papers, and genetically, those things are gonna be consistent from generation to generation. So, um, yeah, which speaks to temperament and character and just their build, stature, what they look like. You do see a lot of Pyrenees photos. Well, they're called Pyrenees, but they actually don't look much like Pyrenees. Um, they've been mixed with something through the, through the years or whatever, so. I think another thing that you can tell about a good breeder is like they, they'll really question you about your environment, how you're gonna accommodate the dog, how you're gonna look after the dog. And it might seem a little bit sort of um, intrusive. intrusive. But they're passionate You're, about the breed. They're right. passionate about what they're doing. They're, they're, yeah. They're so I, I think if you meet a breeder selling. that has quite a solid application process, it's probably because they're a good breeder and they care about the dogs that they're placing. 
and they want to find good families for their dogs and ensure that they won't end up in rescue homes. So, get him. Mm -hmm. Nice. I gotta dry my dishes now. I gotta make sure we dry our dishes while the dog is pulling on the towel. You're doing such a good job helping me get this dry. Where's Samson? I got, I got your belly. I got your belly. I got your feet. Now you look scary. Now you look like the, now like the, uh, the snow wolf, the Arctic wolf. Don't get too wound up. So how'd you like having a great Pyrenees? Oh. Samson's a good dog. I can't say all Pyrenees are the same, but this one in particular, he's a smart dog. He knows me. He knows me, he knows my truck. He knows when I come in. He says hello every time, smile on his face. He's like, hey, what you got in the truck for me? I missed you. I need petting, it's kinda, you know. Kind of the greeting he gives me, and he's and he and he wants to lean on you for just anything. So one thing that we really liked about the breed when we researched was the temperament. Level-headed, not prone to get angry and aggressive. Never attacked our chickens. Never attacked our kids. Never bit anybody. Anything like that. And basically, he was ba uh, a puppy for the entire time. He was just entering a, quote, adult stage. He had finished growing. And so he was really uh, uh, just a really solid, solid animal. And he was really good with the kids as well. And he never, I think, I think he attached more to us and was more about protecting us as a family than he was necessarily about the birds. Right. He did do that, too. And he knows to protect the home and everything from anything that moves in the woods. Anything at all. If it's a mouse or a squirrel, no. He's on it. He is on it. Do you hear that sound? Did you hear it? See if it happens again. Do you hear that? I'd love to know what it is. What was it, Samson? <coughs> Off he goes again. <coughs> Good boy. Now the little pigs that are like three weeks old now, that are three weeks old or so, they uh, go underneath the fence and uh, they're, uh, the older ones can't get out obviously. But obviously he's not chasing the little pigs. He's just looking at them, standing by them. He's not after them. No, gotta be gentle. Gentle, no, no, gentle. Uh, so if you're wanting to get a Pyrenees, uh, I would say use it, get the animal for the purpose of what it's actually designed to do. And that is to be outside with the flock to protect it. And so, 
um, if you want to, if you live in town and you don't have a lot of room, don't get the animal, get something else. But yeah, so Samson, what he would do though uh, during the day is sit and lay by the house, and uh, about sundown is when he just he went, he went to work, and that meant he was barking, sitting, laying there, or he would get out and just bark at something in the woods and he'd go off and he had a he had a, he had a perimeter outside uh, the house of about 100 yards maybe that he would go uh probably no further than that sometimes he would go into if he might have seen something and go and bark after it and uh, and then he would come back and lay back down uh, sometimes he'll bark for what seemed like hours uh, and sometimes i would say hey man it's okay you can back off uh, he might be smelling something, he might be hearing a dog in the distance, all kinds of things he would respond to. And uh, so yeah, just be mindful of that. Sam! Sam! Good boy. Good job. Get him. <laughs> so, a big question that a lot of people have about Pyrenees is are they trainable? Because they are known for being independent thinkers. It's just the way that they're wired. They are designed or bred to be left alone to sort of do the shepherding um, based on their own instincts. So um, it was a question, like, were we going to be able to train him just in basic obedience? Hello. Okay. Sit. Good boy. Clearly, you've been somewhere in the woodland, huh? Look at these things in your fur. I would say yes, absolutely. I think it's just a question question of if they're motivated to do so. So um, he'd definitely be motivated by affection and play, um, right. more so than food, maybe. Yeah, he would like he 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 knew when he did wrong, and so when I I would say no, don't do that, you know. And he knew the tone, and he would back off. And then from then on, he knew there were his boundaries. We had a crate in front of a doorway into the garage, so he had his own in-out access. Um, but there were times where we might have visitors to the property or we needed to make sure that he was contained. And we could tell him to go in his bed and he would, you know, go in his bed. There you go. So, um, yes, I would say that they're definitely trainable. Yeah, 100%. If you are a fair 
kind of person. I don't think that getting like aggressive with those kind of dogs is gonna produce good results. Tamsin had the most amazing fluffy coat and one of the reasons that I was keen on this breed was because they are known to tolerate cold weather really well. So I grew up having indoor dogs, you grew up having outdoor dogs and I guess we wanted I was like, if a dog, we're going to have a dog and it's going to be outside most of the year, I want it to be <laughs> built for cold weather because where we live, we get a really cold winter. And although he had his shelter and he could come into the garage, um, I still wanted him to, you know, I, I wanted him to be built for the weather. Right. But at the same time, we're also, it's really hot here too in the summers. So, right. Anyway, so, but to he... speak to their coat, they shed twice a year. They have a double coat and they will um, shed just as you're going into the summer and then also just as you're coming out of the summer they get their new coat on for winter and so grooming is really important because if you don't groom them they they get mats sort of like in their armpits and behind their ears and um, so it's uh, it's a dog that does need looking after in terms of its coat that better huh Good boy, good boy. Samson loved being with us on the farm. He was always close by, sometimes just watching in the background and sometimes showing us how he could help. He was a smart dog. He knew where things were. He was gentle with the small animals, respectful of the large animals. He had sense when it came to vehicles and wasn't prone to any kind of reckless or erratic behavior. He truly lived up to his name Brave, strong, loyal, a guardian. <laughs> it was a really good dog. Mm. That is something to praise God for about uh, what he makes that uh, brings us joy that we can enjoy and like the personality of the dog and you know his own characteristics and little things like that um, and something like that you just, we just say we thank God for you know uh, so anyway sad day uh, but God is good As far as the value of what he is, you know, now we don't have a dog that, that around here, uh, and the chickens do free range. And what will end up happening at night is now skunks, raccoons, and possums are they're all going to start because they're going to start exploring and getting closer and closer around the chicken pens. And many of you who do homestead, and, and I've had kept chickens before, and have had raccoons, uh, if you leave feed out, dishes, bowls, or whatever, um, you'll know you had a coon when the dish is tipped up on its end and something's been messed with and you can tell something's a little different. That alone, uh, for having Samson, what he did was create a 200 yard perimeter around our house every single night. And, uh, and there's just a lot of other great points of what you, what you would say of value. I know in the video where I'm driving and mentioning like, yeah, it was like over a thousand dollars we paid for him, but actually the value of him is far greater um, than when you think about what, as he did as his job and the, the things of which we rely on. And, and sometimes if we're out later in, in the night or now, it's, a, it's December, the nights are short, or the days are short, the nights are long. And so if we're out in town and the chickens, need to get in, then they, and they'll get in on their own. 
uh, we, we knew that Samson would be there and it wouldn't be a problem. He'd keep everything away because he would stay put and do his job. And that's valuable, you know, that's valuable. And so anyway, he did his, he did a great job uh, for what, for what he was called to do. Um, and we're going to, uh, we're going to miss him. Come on, bud. Come on. Come on, bud. As with the changing seasons of life, there are times of gain and times of loss. I'm sure we won't remain a dogless family for long, but for now, we grieve the loss of Samson, a dog who was part of our family. We are thankful for the joy he brought us and the memories he left us. We hope you enjoyed him too. Thanks for watching guys. We hope you'll stick around and check out our other videos on growing food, raising livestock and harvesting supplies from our woodland homestead. Aside from being a source of never ending projects and products, we hope that our quest to shape our place in the world by working with nature and not against it will rekindle a warm satisfaction that comes with relearning old skills and bring back the joy and wonderment of being part of a place where balance brings abundance.